engine development this year has really been a process of refinement and the beginning of real productization of it. The core technologies that underlie id Tech 5 were laid out almost three years ago and were in fairly functional shape over a year ago. Uh, the past year has been things like getting the compression and streaming and installation process, background videos, all that type of stuff that goes from proof of concept technology demonstrations into a shipping project. Mega texture is just the term that I coined for these incredibly large 100 gigabyte or so textures that we're using to cover the entire worlds. And in some ways, I've already heard people complaining about the terminology, but we have to call it something, and that's what I originally talked about for the splash damage work with enemy territory, and we're sort of into version 2 or version 3 with the id Tech 5 work in Rage. So there are a lot of parallels between really early console development, like with the Atari Jaguar and these quirky little separate processors, and modern development on the PS3 where you have a central processor which can't do all the work that you need to do on your game, and then you've got these more specialized processors where you need to offload significant amounts of the work that you do there. It's definitely a lot easier nowadays where lots of developers, us included, will complain about the architecture of the PS3 not being particularly easy to develop for, but we need to count our blessings and look back into the, the crappy development tools that we had to use back in the older days, uh, the much more limited power. And while it's definitely easier to develop for a 360 where you've got three symmetric cores with, uh, or three symmetric processors with two threads on each core, uh, versus the PlayStation 3 where you've got one dual thread core and then eight specialized cores in the cell processor. But you can still use modern tools, modern languages, and it still works reasonably well, but it's, it, is, it is kind of a pain. The question of hard drive requirements on the 360 is something that's been stressing us out a little bit this year, where Microsoft has refused to allow us to have a hard drive requirement on there, so we are now working hard to see how well we can make things function streaming from the DVD. Uh, certainly we will use the hard drive where available as a secondary backing cache, uh, but that's going to be one of those things that if you run without a hard drive on there, we're not yet sure how high of quality the streaming experience is going to be. It'll obviously work, it's just a question of if you run around the corner and flip around and look someplace completely different, whether you wind up spending two seconds looking at blurry textures before everything comes in. And we really won't know till six months from now how well that actually turns out. And that's a lot of the work that goes between where we are right now and the final shipping game. The most significant difference that we're looking at right now between the platforms is that on a Blu-ray DVD on the PS3, we actually have enough space to get the quality that we want with the compression ratios that we want on the entire game. And we're really feeling the pinch a lot on the DVDs. We're going to be at least a two DVD game on the 360. And honestly, we would kind of like to be a three DVD game. That would be about, that would match out the Blu-ray pretty well on there. It doesn't fit really well with how the game is divided, but we are going to have to wind up making some compression quality sacrifices to fit onto two DVDs on the 360. And that's one thing that I really do wish Microsoft would make some, some concessions on, because you have to pay a really onerous uh, licensing fee per DVD. And if you look at it as uh, kind of cost per gigabyte on there, the PS3 has a huge advantage if you're doing a large game. And that's really the one thing that I come down and say Sony's got a better uh, system for us there, where running off of a Blu-ray there, or if we, I don't expect we're going to, but if you wanted to do a double-layer Blu-ray DVD, you can have incredibly massive amounts of data. And the technology that we've got now really does wind up using all of that data for good productive things and being limited to the DVDs, which Microsoft already takes a couple gigs off of just because of the way they set things up for their different security architectures and all is kind of unfortunate.